1130 Podcast. It's Odie Breeze, baby. Dre on Will. You know it. Now, where were you was when a nigga was messed up? Where you was I was at, on man? my ass. I was stuck in a tree and out nobody helped me out. Up. Ain't nobody helped me down. I was faded. I was drinking. Ain't I was popping the molly. Shit. I wasn't thinking. But I'm growing. Yo, what do you do, everybody? This your man, Dre, a.k.a. Dre on the wheels. Welcome back to a new episode of the 1130 Podcast. How you doing out there uh, this Tuesday? You know, Paco Tuesday, man. So, uh, Paco's later on tonight, man. But uh, once again, how you guys doing? You know, I got to ask how you guys' weekend was, man. Um, this week on the podcast, you guys, I got my girl, Ashley B, all the way from Columbia, Mississippi. She's going to be joining me this week here on the podcast. It's going to be a dope episode, you guys. Before we dive into that, I want to thank my guests from last week, Rosie the Haitian Mama, and also my big sister, uh, or Robin, whatever you guys want to call her, uh, for stopping by here on the 1130 podcast. I appreciate it so, so much. Also, you guys, before we dive in also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Like this video. I like it, you know. Gonna be a cool one, but like I was saying, you guys, I got my girl Ashley B all the way from Columbia, uh, Mississippi. He's the host of Audaciously Me. Ashley, how you doing? I'm great. I'm great. How are you? <laughs> well, I'm doing wonderful. Um, thank you for joining me here on the podcast this week. So, how's everything? Everything's great. Everything's been going well. I've been making some changes with my podcast to improve. And I'm, I'm starting school tomorrow. Okay. So, yeah, I'm taking a lot of classes that's going to help me improve in this aspect of my life. And I want to thank you so much for having me on here. Okay, no problem, no problem. Where are you going to? Um, East Mississippi Community College. Okay, studying. <laughs> I'm, right now, I'm doing um, a few minors in business and marketing. And then after I finish my two years here, I'm going to go to the university and probably take up uh, psychology. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> Stay focused. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep doing what you're doing. I will. <laughs> Before we dive into it, are you still are you still on the high um, that uh, Kevin Gates like your, um, your tweet on uh, Twitter? I am. I am. Like I'm trying to make it a point to find things to tweet him every day so that he could really, really notice me. I want to bring him on my podcast because he was one of the people that actually encouraged me to go ahead and open up and heal from certain aspects of my life. And like when I first started off, my podcast was named after his I'm Him album. And I was calling my podcast, I Am Her. <laughs> I even did my picture sort of like his album color. I'm, I'm sorry, cover, so. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're a huge Kevin Gates fan. I am, big time. <laughs> All right, that's my man, Kevin Gates. Man. Mm-hmm. I was here in D.C. not too long ago, and uh, it was another uh, uh, lady um, on, um, on Facebook or Instagram was going off because he was here in D.C., and she was so, so mad that uh, – <laughs> Yeah, more. He didn't stop pass or something like that. <laughs> that was cool though. That was uh, <laughs> but um, you got a podcast called Audaciously Me. It's available on Spotify mm-hmm. wherever you get your podcast. Tell my viewers and listeners uh something you know about your podcast. Also, more where they can uh, get it. All right, my podcast is basically about me boldly speaking about certain topics and just putting everything out there. I'm trying to bring some new fun segments on. Like right now I'm doing a herd segment that's going to start tomorrow. I'm bringing on a few ladies that I know personally to share their stories and share what they think about a certain topic and tell a little bit about themselves. Some of them run their own business. Some of them, you know, there's, they're working towards it. So I'm kind of creating a platform with a, you know, a good bit of people. I have a nice audience to share them with. So I'm doing that for them and also know kind of going out there with the women empowerment movement and stuff (laughs) and I also have another segment that I will involve a good group of men as well so yeah I have stuff I have stuff for everybody parents women men struggling teenagers struggling adults you know with certain stuff I I do it all (laughs) there's no 
this certain topic that I'm going to speak on. Whatever I'm feeling for that week, that's what I'm putting out. Okay. That sounds cool right there. That sounds cool. Mm-hmm. Um, I was telling you, uh, I was listening to your podcast. Uh, the first three episodes, um, man, it's like a movie. It's, it's really like a movie, and I respect, and I, you know, can, I don't even know what the words is, but you know, congratulate you on, I guess, to come out and talk about, you know, past struggles and fears and stuff like that, because you gotta be a strong woman to do such a thing, you know, and you've been through and, you know, your past. So, um, like I was listening to it and I was just like, man, you're tough, <laughs> you're tough, you know, uh, oh, yeah. your podcast, you talked about your past struggles and stuff like that. You wanna, you know, great on that. Well, one of my biggest struggles was dating men that I was used to seeing growing up. I'm not just going to say men, my dad, you know, I talk about that a lot. He wasn't a, exactly the best role model then. He has changed a lot now. Like He did a, a total 360. He used to drink all day, every day, come home drunk beating my mom, you know, he's even woke me up out of my sleep and made me sit down and watch and said, you know, if I ever try something stupid-ish like that one day, the same thing's gonna happen to me, you know? And I'm scared. As a child, I'm scared. And then as I got older, I noticed I kept that pattern going in certain relationships. And then, you know, I sat down with my mom after she had got me out of this bind with this um, one guy. And she was like, look, baby, you gonna have to sit down and break this cycle. You can't keep going through this, you know? And like that kept ringing through my head. Of course, I dated a couple of douchebags after that. It, nothing really ever changes overnight. It wasn't until, okay, I'm 29 now. I think I was maybe 25 when I finally broke the cycle. So it hasn't been that much longer though. And I also picked up one of my dad's old habits of drinking a lot. As a female, I was drinking men under the table. I could drink a whole fifth to myself. Like my drink of choice then was Hennessy and I could drink a whole fifth of that by myself. And drinking every day to either help me go to sleep or wind down after a long day of work, had me waking up late, being lazy, not really doing anything, not putting my best effort forward. I was partying all the time. I got two kids and my youngest, she she has that side of me that really doesn't care what she says. I'm gonna say it anyway, cause you need to hear it. I was getting ready to go out one night and her grandma looked at me and said, your baby got something to say to you. And she looked at me and she said, mama, you need to stay at home with us. I don't know why you always gotta go out somewhere. And I'm like, girl, mama gotta live too. I got a life, I'm fixing to go. <laughs> I kept that up for about a year and a half after she said that and landed myself in jail with a DUI. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. So that was one of the biggest turning points for me. One, I never want to go to jail. Yeah. Two, that was a lot of money I had to spend, like a lot. I think I had to spend $2,500. Mm-hmm. over let's see I had to bail myself out of jail I think that was like 175 because you know you got to pay 10 percent of it that was 175 there then going back and forth to court through trial and everything and me I couldn't afford a lawyer at the time I was spending all my money on partying and you know alcohol <laughs> so I was in there alone by myself like I know what happened this night I know I did not do what they said that I did, but one of them that was getting trained, he kind of mentioned that, you know, I'm getting trained. So I was kind of, I came out of this area called the Cotton District in Starkville. And everybody knows if you're on the Cotton District, you're out there partying, drinking, having a good time. So I stop at the stop sign. I see the police car. I'm like, oh, police. Let me make sure I'm driving correctly. So I make a complete stop. I look both ways twice. (laughs) And I left. I get to the light. It's a car in front of me. I stop. The light turns green, I go, and that's when they throw their lights on me. And I'm like, this can't be happening right now. (laughs) 
but it definitely happened. I didn't feel drunk at all. Because like I said, I was drinking so much. I could drink a man under the table, literally. Now, no, not so much. <laughs> but then I could, I could really drink and still function and know what's going on and be well aware of everything. So I get there. I'm there for maybe two or three hours. They take all my information down. Of course, they suspend my license. Had to wait on somebody to come pick me up, but back to the cost. Bail myself out of jail, 175. Then I couldn't get my car till the next morning, and that was like $375. Wow. Right. And I get my car, I leave there, had to go get my license um, reinstated, but they wouldn't. They told me I could go up there and go ahead and just tell them I lost my license because they didn't give me my license back. I did that. So I went on ahead and got my license so that I could go to work and stuff and still have my ID. Now, when I got to court and everything was going, you know, the way it was going, they were, they were making their statement. I made mine. And the judge pretty much told me I should have spent two days in county jail since I did not. I am on probation until all of my fines are paid off. I am to report to a probation officer once a month. I had to go to a um, class for people that get their DUI. You have to sit there, take a class. They give you homework and everything. And I think you get that uh, once a week for a month. And that class was $200 to even get in. Mm -hmm. And all you had to do was sit there for an hour. <laughs> wow. Yes. So, but I got it all paid off within a year. I worked my butt off to pay that stuff off. And it made me learn a very uh, valuable lesson. I realized how much money I was spending where I don't need to spend. I need to spend more time with my kids, Put you know, put the alcohol down. You don't always have to be intoxicated to feel good. You know, just grasp the things around you that you have that you are blessed with and you know that'll kind of ease everything else out like all that pain I was suppressing and hiding that I let out in my first three episodes that played a big part in why I was drinking so much okay okay well, I'm glad you know that's that's very important and you know especially for you know women to come out you know to have that courage and you know in their self and everything to um to uh, release that you know, we all go, we all go um, through our struggles. You know, at one point, you know, I was drinking alcohol, you know, straight, hard alcohol for a while, you know, at uh, times, you know, just couldn't sleep or, you know, just to ease the pain or, mm -hmm. and, like, growing up with me, so, you know, I had, you know, eczema really bad, and not only just being in a wheelchair, you know, dealing with, you know, situations like that, you know, having to overcome you know, those obstacles and stuff, but definitely, like, having eczema, like, as a young, well, well, as a young person, but, like, as, a, like, in my teenage years, when I really started to, like, drinking, you know, it was mm -hmm. bad, it was, you know, just, you know, not, not good, nobody really wants it, it was painful, it was hurtful, it was just, oh, yeah. you know, want to go through, but, you know, now, manageable, and, mm -hmm. but, you know, we, we go through a lot, you know, in life, you know, and we, like like you were saying, you were partying, you know, I was drinking and just like, like I don't care, like I'm young, you know. Right. Mm-hmm. I, I know what you, I know, <laughs> man, I know what you're saying, though. But um, also, uh, we were, you were talking uh, about your kids and stuff and knowing this whole pandemic is going on, how do you feel about uh, your kids going back to school? Well, I'm not like other parents. I don't oppose of them going back to school because the schools that my kids go to, they are well prepared for it. You know, they have it to where it's only five students in a classroom. And I could have sent them, you know, online just virtually every day. But where I am now, my mom, she's two hours away from me. My sister's three hours away from me. Pretty much all I have are my grandparents. And, you know, they're not tech savvy. 
So they go to school two days out the week and then the other three days, the teachers put up, you know, an assignment for them to complete on um, those three days that they aren't in school. So that made it a whole lot easier for me and them. That way I could still work and go to school and make sure they're getting their education. And plus like school is good for kids. It teaches them, you know, how to socialize with people. And also, especially, you know, if you're raising, you know, one child and they don't have any siblings, it, it teaches them how to share. Kids learn from other kids. <laughs> So I don't see anything too wrong with it. Now I can say, if you have too many in one building at a time, that's probably where my problem would come in. Yeah. Uh, what was your thoughts on, did you uh, hear about the whole story that went down in uh, Georgia, the whole uh, 250 uh, students and teachers who uh, contracted the COVID-19 because uh, oh. I guess they went back at the same time. And oh. uh, a student, took a picture of the crowded uh, hallway and stuff, and she got suspended. She got suspended, and her parents were, you know, very furious that she got suspended because I guess that she broke some type of code or whatever like that. But, you know, she got reinstated, though. But, uh, yeah, it was like somewhere in Georgia, uh, they all contracted the COVID-19 because, uh, yeah, everybody went back at one time, crowded, stuff like that. So. That was, that was really crazy. Oh, wow. Like, I heard that a lot of them, you know, contracted the virus, but I wasn't sure that they had everybody back at one time. Now, now that's ridiculous. They didn't think that through. That, that shouldn't have been on the student for posting it. The student didn't do anything wrong. I mean, you're just putting out awareness that this is what's going on. It just shows the different school systems, I guess. Yeah. And how much they care or don't care. Mm-hmm. And I was, like I said, I was real confident in my girls' schools because, not to brag or anything, but to brag, they're in one of the best elementary schools here in Columbus, Mississippi. Okay. And they take a lot of pride and effort into what they do. And I'm very close with all the teachers that they've had, and they kept us all updated, saying, I hate I have to get rid of this, but you know, you guys... This is what's happening. This is what's going on. We're going to make sure everything is safe for, you know, your kids to return and see us. They don't, you know, a lot of the teachers, when they're really close to the students, they like to hug them. They make sure they restrain from doing all of that. They keep the distance in between them. They don't even let them go outside and play on the playground. (laughs) My kids hate that, but I mean, that's what you have to do to keep you from getting sick. Then that's what we're going to (laughs) do. And also make sure I give them vitamins, black seed oil. You got to keep those immune systems up and running because yeah. I won't be able to handle it <laughs> if my kids get sick. Kids, kids are uh, very easy to get sick and stuff. So, yeah. mm-hmm. um, you said you're from Columbia, Mississippi. How is it, you know, being from Columbia, Mississippi? You know, I'm from Washington, D.C. The only furthest I've been is like, well, like Myrtle Beach. So, mm-hmm. Uh, doing this podcast and having the privilege to do it and meet and chat with a lot of people across the country or across the world mm-hmm. uh, Pretty cool. So, you know, I always ask somebody, you know, I'll ask the person, you know, the guest who's on You know, how is it, you know, being from, you know, the place they are from, so Well, being from Columbus, Mississippi, is not a bad thing <laughs> But it's not quite fun either. It's quite boring here. There's really nothing to see here so any chance I get, I'm hoping COVID leaves soon, I like to travel and go see other places because as far as anything else, I'm probably here in the house. And if everything was still open, it, it wouldn't be anything to do here, but go to a bar and go sit down and go out to eat. There's nothing extravagant. <laughs> this is a retirement city, <laughs> literally. <laughs> Who do you like to travel to? Let's see. I ooh, my favorite place that I've traveled to so far has been Vegas. And I think my second is Houston, Texas. Okay. Great. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Many members who went to Vegas, you know, they team on that one. So I'm not to get to Vegas so, you know. Yeah, it's fun. It's real fun. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, uh you were talking about your kids and um school and stuff but uh the kids are also like big stars also too they got their own youtube channel 
Oh, yeah. It's what the Izzy and Lizzie show? Mm-hmm. Great. Uh, tell me about that, because I thought that was really, really cool. So that's something they have been begging to do since they could talk. <laughs> They will sit up on YouTube all day, every day, reenact different videos. So last year, right after Christmas, they had these uh, gifts from their aunt. It was like some squish shows or something because they like slime and stuff that they can make. So I was like, y'all, come on, let's do this. Let's read the instructions. Let's make a video. Oh, is it going on YouTube? I said, yeah, we'll do that. And ever since then, it's been a constant thing. They they've really been putting a lot of effort into it. They'll, they're funny. So it's not too much that they have to do to do a video. You put them on camera, let them talk, they'll take it away. They've so. grown pretty big. Like it hadn't even been a year and I think they're at what, 920 subscribers already somewhere up in there. Yeah. That's pretty cool. That's pretty oh, yeah. <laughs> Focus on that. You got some stars, you got some little stars on your hand. <laughs> oh yeah. That's really cool because most kids, when they get on YouTube, they just want to watch some, you know, other kids play or watch some other, you know, videos. But, you know, mm -hmm. you got kids that want to, you know, have their videos and stuff on YouTube. That's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. But uh, we're going to move on here on the 1130 podcast. You having fun? You having fun here? I am. I am. It's really, I enjoy this a lot. Okay. Yeah, we're going to play a game. We're going to play a game of what you'd rather. That's cool. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> Would you rather, would you rather rewind time or find the love of your life? Ooh. That's a hard one right there. Would I rather rewind time? You know what? I would rather find the love of my life. Okay. Okay. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. Some people. Yeah, I say that. Yeah. Some people get in trouble a lot or, you know, go through, you know, certain situations and just get caught up and stuff and be like, man. If I can rewind like five minutes, I'd be good. <laughs> That's cool. Also, uh, would you rather also stink and not know it or always smell something that stink and no one else smells it? <laughs> <laughs> I would hope if I stink at all, I would smell myself before anybody else so I could fix it. But if I stink, I would want somebody to tell me. I don't know. <laughs> um... <laughs> uh, oh my goodness <laughs> would you rather have eyes that can capture everything on video or ears that can record all sounds mm, probably ears that can record no 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 I might hear something I don't like it you know what yes ears that can record all sound yes <laughs> I want that <laughs> you ain't never been lost before I might want to just you know go back and <laughs> you know, try to figure out where where was I at before here. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I had one of them little bit two beers, you know, that night before, and just wound up like, why did I get here? <laughs> why I'm back? And be like, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you had a lot of those moments, you know, drinking, man, just waking up now. Oh, yeah. What? Okay. I've had plenty of those. Plenty of those. Uh, would you rather give up pizza forever or give up tacos forever? Mm. <laughs> oh, I probably say pizza. I like tacos better than I like pizza. So, pizza. <laughs> and this comes out every Tuesday, so Taco Tuesday is where it's at. It's where it's at. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Would you rather spend one night with your most hated ex or live on the street for a week? I'll live on the street for a week. <laughs> I don't blame you. I can survive. I blame you. I have a pillow, some covers right there. Okay. Uh, <laughs> would you rather be the opposite gender for one day or be any animal for one day? Um... I kind of want to do both. And if you, you know, choose one, what would be like the first thing you'll do? Oh. <laughs> well, if I choose to be the opposite gender one day, oh. <laughs> oh 
no rest. <laughs> I don't know if the people want to know what the first thing I would do with that. <laughs> and hey. I joke about it all the time. <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh. Yeah, I don't think they want to know what I'd do if I was <laughs> the opposite gender for a day. <laughs> Oh, all right. Would, if you was an animal, what would, what would you do? Mm, if I was an animal, I would hope to be a bird so I could fly around to different areas and just see what it's like. Okay. But yeah. <laughs> bird, most likely, yeah. I would like to fly mm -hmm. bird. But uh, yeah, if I was the opposite sex, we all know probably what we would do. <laughs> I'd be like, okay, oh, oh, <laughs> oh sucks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, would you rather be able to see your own future or be able to see everyone else's future but your own? I think I would rather see my future. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, set ahead of yourself, so. <laughs> I would rather see mine. Okay. Would you rather <laughs> would you rather <laughs> Kevin Gates or win a thousand dollars for the rest of your life? Look, as much as I love Kevin Gates, I'd rather get that thousand dollars for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. What you said every week for the rest of my life? Every day. You'll win dollars oh. a day for the rest of your life. Oh yeah, I'll take the money. That way I can do whatever I need to do. And if I want to see them again, I can buy any concert ticket, tour tickets, all that. Yeah, I'll take the money. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's real cool, man. That's cool. But I, hey, we having fun here on the 1130 podcast. I got my girl Ashley D here on the podcast here. Uh, this week, you guys, uh, sit tight. We're gonna take a quick short break and I'll be right back here on the 1130 podcast. When it comes to growing your podcast, it's tough to know where to start. That's why Anchor gives podcasters the tools they need to make each episode better than the last. Now, Anchor Analytics includes new stats from Spotify to help you better understand who's listening and what they like about your show. With charts that let you see how far people are making it into each episode and where they're dropping off, you can plan your podcast around the content that performs best. Hover over to see how many people are tuning into specific segments and learn what hooks your audience by comparing the average listening time across multiple episodes. Using anonymized demographic data from Spotify, take a granular look at the age and gender of your listeners to start tailoring your content or targeting new audiences. Track analytics from multiple platforms and Spotify insights. Everything you need to grow your podcast all in one place with Anchor. Yo, you guys, welcome back here to the 1130 podcast. Give a shout out to my big brother, Jody Breeze. I appreciate you so, so much, man, for the music, man. They did. So, you guys, man, uh, I got my guest this week on Station Sweet D, um, Ashley D, all the way from Columbia, Mississippi. Um, how you doing, Ashley? I'm great. I'm great. Thanks for having me. Thank you for joining me here on the podcast. On the podcast, um, I've been following you on social media. You're a big dancer, and you're really into TikTok and stuff like that. Um, tell me more about that because you and your daughters be really, really killing it. <laughs> See, I got on TikTok because of them actually, because they were like, "Mama, come on, let's do a TikTok." When the pandemic first kicked off, and that's what got us through most of the, you know, first couple of weeks. And they pretty much were on TikTok a lot on their separate pages so i just took the idea i was like hey tiktok has a business area why not use these tiktoks to advertise or market what we do so they now have one to market their youtube videos and i made one to bring some fun and excitement to my podcast episodes you know just you know i don't want anything to be too serious so i always try to put my goofy side in and, you know, kind of give everybody a feel of who I am. And mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> add some humor to it. That's cool though. So they all, they got their own TikTok also. 
they do. They don't get on there as much anymore. They just use the one for um, their YouTube now. Okay, that's that's mm-hmm. pretty. But um, as far as you dancing, do you still um dance and stuff like that? Oh, I try to, but when I t- look mm-hmm. after high school, I gained a good 65, 70 pounds. I used to be a stick. I can't even leap <laughs> that high in the air anymore. But I try. I definitely try because I know once I get in the groove, maybe I can get back in it and hopefully get back in shape. So I definitely try. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, well, you started podcasting um, about what in March? What, uh, so like the beginning of March. Okay. What kind of what kind of got you into um, podcasting and stuff? Well, the guy that I'm dating now, I was talking to him because I used to be a really shut off person. I didn't let anybody too close to me because I always feel like the closer you are, the you know, the more you can hurt me. And I felt like. He is somebody that I can trust. So I was talking to my best friend. She was like, just open up to him. Stop. So anything that you heard in my podcast, I've talked to him about, I've opened up about it. And he just looked at me, I guess he didn't know what to say. He was like, have you ever thought about starting a podcast? Mm-hmm. I was like, I don't know. I work at night. When would I have time to do that? You know, cause we were working, we, we worked together before this whole thing happened. We were working together and just one night after work, we sat down and talked and he was just, have you ever thought about doing a podcast? And I was like, yeah, but these people don't want to hear about me or what I had going on. But turns out <laughs> it helped some people. So I'm glad I did it. That's cool. That's really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I started um, back in December. And um, my brother was just like, you know, man, you know, because this goes back to another thing, you, you know, just being lost in life just struggling, kind of, you know, get by. And that's where a lot of, you know, the drinking for me kind of like picked up too, because mm-hmm. I'm you know, frustrated with myself and just like, okay, um, I don't know where to go. I mean, or how to get there, but I know exactly what I want to do. And mm-hmm. ought to be a product of your environment. So it's just like, it, it get really, really tough on you. And each day you're just waking up and you just, it's just the same, it's just the same, same old, same old. You just right. out of it. And you know, you just want something different. You know, mm-hmm. my brother, you know, was coming around. Uh, well, I mean, he was always around, but you know, he came around and it was like, man, I got this business, you know, I wanna I wanna see if you, you know, interested in, you know, trying to, you know, get involved in, but you know, we put that on hold. And he also was like, man, you know, you should do this podcast and one thing led to another, and seven months later, um, I'm here with you. You're on the pop. Hey. <laughs> cool story. But um, yeah, uh, about what March, this whole uh, coronavirus stuff picked up and, you know, um, started going wild. Most people were, uh, were doing like in studio podcast things and stuff like that. This is kind of like um, doing before the whole virus and stuff like that. Um, well, my own que- my main question basically is, uh, how is you uh, maintaining and staying focused throughout the whole coronavirus? Well, it actually helped me because I was like, okay, now I have a lot of time to do what I said I wanted to do this year. I may not have all the funds, but I definitely have the time to start getting the ball rolling. So I I said I sat down and I was like, okay, well, my podcast first, it was coming out every Thursday. So I was like, okay, I'm going to start putting out every Monday and my kids' videos will come out every Tuesday. That way I have like a set schedule and I had nothing else getting in the way. So I couldn't be like, well, I don't have time. I don't have time. So now I have all the time in the world to sit down, research, study, do this and just plan it all out. Like this actually helped me a lot. It helped me a lot, a lot. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. Mm-hmm. Too also, because they are, you know, I really I wasn't working, so this whole podcasting thing was just like a even more of a blessing. So mm-hmm. I like stay focused, and uh, this whole coronavirus kind of like set every everybody down, and a lot of people laid off and not working, going to school, stuck at home. Uh, just so much going on. So you know, just finding, you know, what you like to do and stay focused and doing what you, you know, good at. Mm-hmm. That's all that matters. That's all that matters, though. But um, we're going to move on here on the 1130 podcast. 
Uh, it's time for our WTF moment of the week. I have my girl here, Ashley D. Uh, ladies first, ladies first. So I know you got a WTF moment of the week. I got a, a couple of this week. <laughs> It's just, it's so crazy. It's so crazy. But um, you first. I definitely do. Well, my neighbor had a cookout. And he asked, could his niece and nephew, you know, jump on my kid's trampoline? I was like, yeah, sure. I'll even send mine out there to play with them. I'm in my house cleaning up. Like, I took everything out that I needed to throw away because I can keep on the stuff. I'm a, I can hold on to stuff for a long time. So I was just taking everything out of the cabinets and everything, just throwing stuff away that I don't use. Next thing I know, my door opens and it's the niece and nephew. And I'm like, uh, where y'all going? <laughs> and she goes, hi. I was like, hey. She opens my refrigerator. I was like, okay. She looks at me and she leaves. Right, right, bold. She comes back. <laughs> and she, she said a couple of things, but the two things that kind of, struck me was when she was like hey destiny i said my name is ashley she was like well i'm gonna call you destiny i said no you're gonna call me ashley that's my name that's what my mama named me exactly okay she leaves again and she comes back and i'm like what are you doing why do you keep walking in my house you're not knocking you're just leaving and coming back in Mm -hmm. so then she asked me she says so ashley how much money do you have I said, baby girl, now I feel like you and somebody trying to rob me. You're going to have to come on up at my house. So I didn't know what was going on. And I don't like to mistreat anybody's kids. I don't know if an adult is sending her over here to ask me these questions. So when she left back out, I went and grabbed my gun and I put it real close to me because I didn't know who was going to walk back back through that door (laughs) when she left and came back. So that's my WTF moment of the week. (laughs) That is a WTF moment if it (laughs) I don't even think mine's even come up to that. <laughs> Man. Like, okay. All right. Don't mess with that. <laughs> okay, you guys. My WTF moment. I got two of them this week, but uh, both of them crazy, though. The first one, man. I was talking about this uh, last week with my sister um, about, uh, you know, yes, the coronavirus is out here. Yes, we all got to stay safe. And yes, we got to wear a mask. Some people don't like wearing a mask, though. But, uh, hey, everybody got their own beliefs and stuff like that. And um, But uh, it's a 17-year-old who uh, worked at a Chili's restaurant. Um, and she was doing her job, of course. She was doing her job. But a huge gathering of women uh, showed up. And they wanted to sit together. But, of course, the coronavirus policy is that only six people can be seated at a table um so the group got outraged and they started arguing with the 17 year old they all attacked they all attacked her basically though because she could not they all the whole huge group of 13 women uh could not sit together at a gathering At the Chili's on Constitution Avenue, just off of College Drive, Kelsey Wallace says she was working on Sunday when a large group of about 13 people came in to eat. My general manager tells us we're not supposed to sit a table over six because of the coronavirus. She says she sat six of them down at one table, but she couldn't seat the rest of the party at another table because there were still more than six people. Wallace says the group became increasingly upset, so she went to get her manager a second time. That's when police say she was attacked. And she pushed me, and when she pushed me, all I knew was to, you know, push her back. I reacted, and um, that's when her and her daughters, they all came, and they grown women. I'm 17 years old. They're like 20, 30, and a woman that pushed me looked like she was like 40. So instead of they on me, they beating me, I'm instead of trying to hit them, trying to get all of them off me, and then the lady, she takes a wet floor sign and slams it in my eye, and I had blood gushing everywhere, like, with her face covered in blood, Wallace was eventually taken to the back of the restaurant. Police arrived after the alleged attackers left in different cars. After that, I had to go to the hospital to get five stitches in my eye. And as I'm laying on the bed, this keeps replaying in my head. I couldn't believe that. Like, I couldn't believe, you know, I'm trying to work, you know, and this happened to me. Along with the shock and embarrassment that she's felt, coupled with the pain in her eye. And I have a big 
bald spot in the back of my head from them ripping my hair out. Wallace is still wondering why no one at the restaurant stepped in during or after the brawl broke out. The managers, them, like they walked out the how y'all let them leave like that. I mean, they could have locked the doors, try to kept them till the police came. Surveillance footage of the attack was obtained by police. And now Wallace just wants those responsible to be held accountable. I want them in jail. I think they should. I don't think that they should be able to get away with this. Table, though. Right. You know, you're just going to beat up a girl. I, that don't even make sense, though. That don't even None at all. Not at all. But also, another WTF moment, you guys about to show you a video. If you haven't seen it already, it was an officer in California um, riding by, you know, just regular old day. And uh, he sees a dude in a wheelchair who's crossing the railroad tracks. But coming up is a train also. The guy in the wheelchair is stuck. So the officer gets out of his cruiser, of course, you know, and helps the guy. Uh, was in the wheelchair, get across the uh, train tracks because if that police officer wasn't there, it would have been a, a very, very tragic. This is the moment Officer Erica Urea of the Lodi Police Department in California spots a man on a wheelchair appearing to be stuck on the train tracks as a train was fast approaching. I'll be out with the mail stack on the tracks trying to get him out. As the crossing arms come down, Officer Urea jumps into action. Get up, get up, get up, get up, get up. The train horn blaring, getting louder and louder. Just seconds to save this man's life. Officer Urea hauling the man from the chair, pulling him off the tracks, the train barreling past them, crushing the wheelchair. The only thing that was going through my mind at that time was just to get him off the track. Just get him off the track, get him off the track. The train did hit that 66-year-old man, but tonight he's alive. Officer Urea, a 14-year veteran of the force and a single mom. It just comes down to someone needed help, and you go out there and help them. There's no one here in the in the department that uh, that would have done the same thing. It's a crazy situation, or was it like a 50-some year old man? I don't know how old he was though, but uh, mm -hmm. crossing, the tra crossing the train tracks, uh, got stuck. Cause I know how it is. I'm in a wheelchair. You cross something, you get stuck. That's just your ass, especially if you're by yourself. So, <laughs> right. It's crazy though, crazy. WTF moment though. Mm -hmm. But you guys, man, uh, Ashley D joining me here on the podcast this week. Before I wrap it up, anything else you know you want to uh, say? Um, I don't have too much to say. Just thank you for having me on here. Thank you, thank you for asking me to be a guest. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> um, I really enjoyed it. No problem. And that's pretty much it. I appreciate you joining me. I appreciate it. That's my Thank girl. You. D right here. She's the host. Let me get it right because I got getting them mixed up. <laughs> Ashley D, she's the host of Audac Audaciously Me. Uh, available wherever you get your podcasts. Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts. You guys, Ashley D, all the way from Columbia, Mississippi. I appreciate you, Ashley, for joining me this week here on the 1130 Podcast. All right, no problem. Thank you. <laughs> Yo, Ashley, I appreciate you stopping by here on the 1130 podcast this week. Sweet, sweet, sweet. You guys, man, go follow Ashley, man, at Audaciously Me. And go check her podcast out, Audaciously Me. You can find her on Google Podcasts, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts. That's Audaciously Me. My girl, Ashley D., thank you for uh, coming by this week to share your experience and your past struggles and um, just let my viewers know what your podcast is about and uh, to talk about your young daughters, man. They stars. They on YouTube. They stars. Check check her uh, daughters out. The Izzy and Lizzie show on uh, on YouTube, you guys, man. But uh been a dope, dope episode, you guys, man. Also, man, I want to shout out, man, Nipsey Hussle, man. His birthday was this past weekend, man. That was a real, real legend, man. Taking us, taking away from us too soon. Um, man, old Twitter, old social media was celebrating his birthday. So I thought I'd shout out, shout out my man, Nipsey Yussel, man. Rest in peace, man. Rest, rest in paradise, man. Keep, keep it going. Yo, man, from another legend, from another legend, you guys, man, in Orange County, California, you guys. Yes. In Orange County, California, um, they have voted and came to terms that on August 24th in Orange County, Florida, did I say Florida or California? 
<laughs> Orange County, California. I hope I said that right. Uh, they came to terms. They voted. And August 24th is indeed the Kobe Bryant Day, you guys, man. Kobe Bryant Day, man. That's dope. That's dope, man. Kobe Bryant was my best favorite all-time basketball player of all time, man. Don't get no better than Kobe Bryant. A lot of people love Michael, but Kobe was my man. And you guys, a little fun fact, man. During this episode, you guys, uh, I did not have the microphone plugged in. Um, so if I sound different than when I was just interviewing, uh, actually, man, that's because the court was not plugged in the whole episode. That's a fun fact. <laughs> Man, that's when you need to stop smoking too much weed. I know, I know. But uh, you guys, man, sports is also taking over right now. We got the NBA playoffs is about to take over, you guys, man. Man, oh, man, my leg is marching strong. My late, my Lakers are marching strong for real. And oh yeah, out of control podcast, man. I don't appreciate you keep posting on posters about uh, the Toronto Raptors, man. Yeah, y'all good contenders, and y'all, y'all may, y'all may just make it back to the finals though. But uh, hey, if the Lake Show got anything to do with it, nah, that ain't happening though. That ain't happening though. But shout out to my man Damian Leonard, man, looking like a beast. He looking like a beast though. But uh, we gonna see how this uh. We're going to see how this playoff turn out. We're going to see how it turn out, though. But uh, you guys, man, it's your man, Dre, a.k.a. Dre on wheels. I appreciate you guys joining me, man, for real, on this episode. But, uh, man, I couldn't believe I did not have that mic <laughs> the cord in. But, uh, you guys, man, don't forget, man, to follow me on Twitter at Dre on wheels. Like the 1130 Podcast on Facebook. Follow me on Instagram at the 1130 Podcast. If you want to be a guest here on the show, uh, email at the 1130 Podcast at gmail.com. Yeah, and also, you guys, each and every Thursday, you guys, man, I'm over on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts, you guys. It's the 1130 Podcast Talk Pro Wrestling. Join me each week as I uh, review, recap the whole past week and pro wrestling, and I interview some of your favorite wrestlers and independent wrestlers, man. It's going down, man. That's the 1130 Podcast Talk Pro Wrestling, guys and also don't forget to hit that subscribe button here on youtube man i appreciate it so so much like this video man leave a comment i appreciate it so so much you guys man so uh hey we're gonna keep taking over man on this podcast thing man yo it's your man drake aka drake on wheels you can take that i'm out flip it to a boulder hold up dog because the fans will patrol bruh yeah zody breeze you know it